I'm back. Thank you for sticking with us. You for just joining us. Well, welcome. This is the first interview of the day. Um, and today we want to talk about something that's affecting us as Africans. So what exactly is the, how is exactly the ICT, you know, development? So we want to talk about the um, Africa ICT development indicators. And for this, uh, we have been joined by a guest who's not a first time visitor. Uh, he's been here before. He goes by the name Engineer John Opio. He's a computer forensics expert. Welcome, Engineer. Thank you. Thank you. Happy New Year. Oh, Happy and New Year. Happy New Year to our viewers, wherever <laughs> oh, they are. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. So, we Happy New Year. We say back in March. Hey, yeah. Happy New Year. <laughs> still March. We still, still yeah. New Year. New Year. <laughs> Not just so really all right. Yes. Um, so now, we want to talk about, you know, Africa ICT development indicators. Why do we need to talk about this topic in the first case? Uh... Why we need to talk about this topic? Uh, we know for sure technology is the core of mm -hmm. everything that we do. And uh, looking at the, the fourth industrial revolution, that is where we are today and for the future. And uh, if you look at the, if you look back from the industrial revolution, mm -hmm. from the 1700s to 1900s where we had uh, coal, uh, from there, we went to um, uh, steam engines, mm -hmm. then uh, electric engines were invented, then semi-automated machines, and now we are looking at, now automating everything. Yeah. And uh, we are looking at biological, mechanical, physical, mm -hmm. you know, we are bringing them together in one aspect. So as Africa, uh, we need not to be left behind this. Mm -hmm. We need to be uh, the champions because we have all what it takes uh, to ensure that we realize uh, the fourth industrial mm -hmm. revolution, which is coming with a lot of um, mm -hmm. uh, opportunities, you know, uh, for the young people. Mm -hmm. So when we are looking at the indicators of the ICT or tech in Africa, before we get to the, yes. to the indicators, uh, yeah, yes, yes, mm, you have talked about you know the fourth industrial revolution coming with a lot of automations, mm. and you've mentioned even biological. So someone may th may, may be wondering. Well, how do you mean biological when you talk about automation? Biological, you know, we'll be talking about neurotechnology. Mm -hmm. Yes, genetic engineering mm -hmm. or editing. Okay. You know, when now we go to the medical field. Right. Yeah. So does that, <laughs> let me let break it different down further. Mm. Th does that um, look like, or try to picture it, is that, um, you know, mo the modification of children also, you know. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit scary when you think about it. Yes. You know, uh. where wombs won't be in use uh. at some point, you know. Women, you know, they can just be incubated for, they can for be, that yeah. period of time. Yeah, for sure. You know, uh, you look at uh, uh, this uh, history, maybe from whatever we've learned, mm -hmm. that there are some people, they cannot be able to carry uh, uh, the pregnancy yeah. or uh, they don't have that womb. So with the technology, it, it, it has brought, it has created that space which uh, we can be able to do what? to get all this together, put them somewhere, and form a baby. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Again, when we look at the mm. neurotechnology, the neurons, uh, mm. when we talk about the brain, the surgery, you know, all yeah. this, you know, so we, we bring the uh, technology aspect of it so that we can be able uh, to improve on the medical technology and so as to get uh, to be precise on whatever kind of um, innovation or uh, uh, the medical innovation mm -hmm. uh, research, you know, so that we can be very, very more specific. Mm -hmm. And this can only be done uh, through uh, that uh, technology. Okay. Yeah. Wow, it's, it's quite something. And you know, with the revolution coming and happening, some people 
are scared by it some people are happy about it i don't know where you stand with it what do you think is it is it a good thing will, will it get out of, out of hand because when we're talking about automation also talking about artificial intelligence right yes so you know with artificial intelligence also comes you know replacements of job to some extent mm. because some will be uh, you know faced out mm. so is it a good thing or is it not such a good thing it is a good thing uh, you know with technology it is a go normally technology brings good things mm -hmm. you know when you look at environment you look at the um, business blockchain you know uh, you look at mm -hmm. education you know when you bring the aspect of technology it will be of great milestone uh, for us as a country or for us as a continent mm -hmm. uh, because uh, with uh, the evolution of technology we'll be able to create more opportunities and uh, when we are creating more opportunities we are looking at reskilling you know uh, we look at the dynamics of the industries mm -hmm. uh, the jobs which are there then we see because now what again we need to talk about mm -hmm. Uh, when we're looking at the technology, because it is the uh, driving factor at the moment and for the future, uh, we have a reskilling of, uh, of, uh, re uh, re of, um, of people or uh, uh, to create that uh, job market and okay. again having industries. So what we need to, to understand, uh, how do we reskill uh, re mm -hmm. and how do we ensure that uh, the skills that we are gaining uh, out of this is useful to the the industries okay, so you know so yeah. now the industries we must have something like a linkage between the the academic institutions and or the exactly training institutions and actually what, what is, is happening in the job market mm -hmm. so that we don't be uh, rendered jobless mm -hmm. yes okay. because if we understand what the, the 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 industry wants then we create for the industry mm -hmm. the raw material they want all right yes so what kind of skills are needed for for this particular revolution to be in line and adaptable to it mm -hmm. Yes, because here we are looking at the, the labor market, creating a labor market. Mm -hmm. And uh, since uh, we know uh, technology is about uh, the automation, we are looking at uh, having uh, artificial intelligence, we are looking at uh, blockchain, uh, we are looking at neurotechnology, and uh, so many other aspects. Mm -hmm. It is how, on which industry are you in? And uh, mapping that industry, in the next, uh, uh, in the in the future, mm -hmm. what will it look like, and what will be obsolete by then, which you need to have uh, as at now, okay. and uh, here we are looking at uh, getting uh, the technological best skills. Maybe if you are studying agriculture, maybe you are doing agricultural engineering. Mm -hmm. So that is food security. So how do you bring the aspect of technology? in agriculture to uh, create that sustainable uh, development in that field so that you can uh, uh, have that food security. So how are you going to uh, mm -hmm. generate or how are you going to uh, come up with the crops which will overcome the challenges, the diverse effect, because we have seen from the, uh, the, the effects of the uh, yeah. climate, uh, you know, uh, there are some regions now that they don't do best in agriculture. But if the trend continues, how do we now rethink and reshape all this uh, into technology so that we can be able to beat the future? Mm -hmm. uh, Okay, so it's actually scaling, looking into what you're doing mm. now and foreseeing what's coming in the future and yes. staying in line with it. So I'm wondering, in the media, how exactly I'm supposed to position myself, but <laughs> I know we'll figure it out mm. <laughs> one or the other. Uh. So yeah, so now, um, are we, how, how prepared are we for, for all this technology that's coming um, with the revolution talk about um, connecting the communication interaction you know mm. uh, we have had um, of the metaverse mm. that's supposed to come that's being worked on with you know by meta Mark mm. Zuckerberg and team mm. so this will be a platform where people can 
you know, you virtually are anywhere in the world. You don't need to meet up with people. You don't need to do... So how prepared are we as Africans? You know, mm. there's a lot of things happening at the same time, very fast, mm. uh, in the Western world. But how prepared are we as Africans for this technology? That's so, you know, us? when we're looking at the, pre, uh, the technology aspect in Africa, the, the indicators, first, we need to talk about technology access. Mm -hmm. Secondly, we need to talk about uh, technology use. Uh, then, uh, uh, thirdly, we need to talk about uh, technology, making it uh, mm -hmm. the availability, the infrastructure, you know. So when we talk about uh, technology access, uh, access mm -hmm. uh, here we look at how do we make it very accessible? How do we develop the infrastructure which is required uh, as the engine to drive uh, the technology mm -hmm. to create that access. So when we are talking about the, the, the technology uh, access or infrastructure is creating a platform on how we'll be able uh, to share information or transmit or access across uh, the globe or within the, the continent. And uh, for example, if you look at um, uh, the mobile use, uh, for example, in Africa, uh, it, it has done a tremendous uh, job when it comes to techno technology access because we are looking at about, about 1.7 uh, million people uh, who are, uh, uh, ac uh, can uh, access mm -hmm. mobile services and they can be able to use uh, mobile technology mm -hmm. you know that's the first thing so now how do we make uh, this uh, technology to be accessed even to the remote uh, areas. Uh, areas and when we are looking at access of technology in remote areas uh, the infrastructure uh, do we have um, maybe the fiber optics do we have uh, you know name all the uh, name uh, all of it uh, secondly uh, do we have uh, electricity because it is another aspect yeah. and in areas like in remote villages or remote towns where there is no they don't have access to electricity mm -hmm. how do we power them and uh, put them on the grid and that will bring the aspect of uh, green um, uh, the the solar mm -hmm. uh, the solar uh, technology mm -hmm. so that they can uh, remain on the on the grid so that would bring once the infrastructure is put in place it will uh, uh, generate or, t uh, or it will accelerate the access of technology by many africans so uh, in that regard we need to ensure that uh, mm -hmm. uh, the proper infrastructure is laid down and uh, this is one of the indicators in which the mm -hmm. private uh, sector and the, the government you know they need to come together and see the best way they can be able to uh, fast track on the connecting you know uh, the, mm -hmm. the regions so that they can uh, become one because we cannot talk about technology without connectivity mm -hmm. yes okay so we need to have the connectivity we have to have it in place the infrastructure needs to be you know, good for, yes. for us to adapt into it yes. the correct way. Mm. What about uh, digital literacy? Uh, once uh, you you talk about once you you talk about um, connectivity, uh, you come with technology access and preparedness. You see, so once you are the the infrastructure in place, so there will be that urge. Uh, or you already you will be uh, you will be ready mm -hmm. to access the technology services now we'll talk about uh, the access so the access uh, here we need now to ge to create room for training and reskilling so that people can be able to understand what is this uh, uh, digital uh, platform how does it does it work because now we are talking about digital transformation whereby digital transformation, we are moving from the analog to the yes. digital uh, platform. We have seen the tremendous efforts that uh, has been done within our country, Kenya, uh, on especially on the digital infrastructure. And uh, the government is really championing about uh, digital uh, transformation, mm -hmm. whereby uh, recently we, we had the interview 
uh, the CS uh, for ICT uh, talking about uh, the measures which they put in place to ensure that uh, mm. we go fully digital, digital and trying to pull all these government services into a digital uh, platform. So that must come with the digital literacy. People must be trained. We must be reskilled so that we can understand how do we use uh, access information from this digital platform and because already we are working on that infrastructure uh, even to the local or remote areas uh, once the infrastructure in place now uh, you create that platform on how you can be able to train these uh, people to understand mm. what uh, digital is all about and how they can be able to go about it okay yes at the, at the moment where would you where would you say uh, the level of digital literacy in Africa is. We've seen efforts, as you've mentioned, by, you know, the government of Kenya. But where do you see us at? Uh, the Africa entirely, uh, we are not uh, that bad, mm -hmm. but still much need to be done okay. because we are not yet there. And uh, looking at the fourth industrial revolution which is in place, mm -hmm. uh, we need to ensure that we put everything in order so that we can be able to do what? Mm -hmm. We can be able to cope up with the current uh, trends. So what makes us to, we, we still lag behind because when you look at uh, technological advancement and map them within the, our continent, the mm -hmm. spheres of our continent, we still lag behind. Mm -hmm. And uh, this uh, needs a total uh, engineering reskilling of, uh, of, um, uh, of, uh, of the people and again uh, uh, the way I had talked about uh, the government giving uh, the platform for young innovators, young people to come up with innovation uh, in innovation skills which can be able to promote or accelerate uh, mm -hmm. uh, this particular uh, uh, process. Yes, so we still lag behind as Africa and uh, we still need to do a lot when it comes to tech infrastructure, developing the tech infrastructure okay. and digital literacy. Mm -hmm. yes. So a lot still needs yes. to be done. But if you look at uh, mm -hmm. a few countries, maybe if you look at Kenya, for example, you look at South Africa, mm -hmm. you look at uh, Uganda, uh, you look at Nigeria, you look at Ghana, a lot of invention. Because, for example, Kenya, we thrive on the mobile money. Mm -hmm. uh, which has never been, uh, you know, there is no any other country that which has, has ever developed that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it has brought that uh, particular, mm -hmm. it has brought that uh, intention, you know, and love for technology and mm -hmm. technology access, okay. you know, yes. All right, so we are moving well, including the growth of startups, the hubs that, you know, different governments are creating. We've seen Rwanda also mm. coming up really well. So we are doing, we are, we are trying at least. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. So, so on, the, on the same, uh, when looking at the infrastructure, uh, the way you have stated, we need to look at the creation of the digital hubs where we can be able to nurture and do the incubation of the technology mm -hmm. uh, or the innovative skills that are being propelled or championed by these uh, young individuals. So once we have that uh, in place, now we'll find ourselves moving into the uh, uh, right trajectory uh, as far as uh, the four IR is concerned. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay. So um, what, is, what are the main key areas of the fourth uh, industrial revolution? So the, uh, the key main areas, one, we have um, blockchain technology. You see now, we want to create a platform whereby we do transactions and um, you, it, it doesn't require you to be there in person. Mm -hmm. You know, we create a platform whereby we can be able to do the, all our business transaction. Uh, we keep the records digitally. Uh, anybody can be able to follow around the globe. Secondly, we look at uh, agriculture, smart agriculture because that is another area which is being um, accelerated by the fourth industrial revolution. Mm -hmm. And how uh, do we ensure that we have, uh, we have implemented um, sensors uh, or artificial intelligence systems which can be able to collect the environmental data, we can analyze the data, 
and plan uh, for the future. No, and we can be able to see when it comes to food security, how well should we prepare ourselves for the future and what needs to be done. And that can only uh, be achieved through collecting data, analyzing and getting the facts right. Mm -hmm. That is the second area. The third area is um, it comes to digitization mm -hmm. or the automation of uh, the systems. Uh, looking at um, uh, looking at uh, 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 how government they conduct their businesses, mm -hmm. putting things online uh, so that people can be able to access uh, the information in digital uh, platforms when it comes to education, whereby it is not a must that you go to the class, but you can, uh, uh, you can be able to attend uh, this uh, particular class uh, through online mm -hmm. and have uh, online um, uh, classes. Uh, we look about in the field of healthcare, okay. how do we ensure that um, uh, the 4 IR will be able to help us understand uh, the challenges, uh, help us uh, come up with in innovation to, so that we can be able to address the issues of healthcare services. Like for example, you saw uh, in, in our country, uh, we are talking about uh, the universal healthcare and uh, the president had launched about uh, community health promoters. Uh, what they normally do, like for example, they go where the community is, they collect data, that data is stored somewhere, so that you can be able to follow, you can be able to understand yeah. uh, how people are, uh, what they are going through, and you can even do referrals, because already you have data of a how the whole household, or, or uh, history, or of an individual within a specific uh, region, mm -hmm. whereby we create that uh, uni uh, universal healthcare system, whereby maybe if, even if you become sick in Nairobi and you go to Mombasa, still you can walk to any medical facility. Mm -hmm. They key in a unique identifier and they can be able to see um, your medical history and see how they can be able uh, to start uh, or to give you uh, medication. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so those are the key um, Areas, areas which is being championed mm -hmm. or accelerated by the fourth industrial revolution because we are looking at uh, automation, we are looking at AI, we are looking at uh, robotic systems, uh, we are looking at big data, and we are looking at uh, cyber security. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Mm. All right. Well, you've talked about healthcare and um, what's being done. So, do you think we will get to that point, which I think it's not so hard? where the UK is and the Western countries where you can even just, you know, dial the doctor and <laughs> get <laughs> services mm. virtually mm. and it actually works for people. Yes. Are we getting there? That's where we are headed to. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is no turning back. Okay. Because with the proper infrastructure in place, yeah. with the proper systems in place, and proper of reskilling, which we have talked about to create that labor market, we'll be able to, technology is going to create for us uh, that platform, uh, which uh, everything will be just from your, you, you just dial, wherever you are, you dial and you get the information you want. Okay. Yes. At the comfort mm. of your home. At the comfort <laughs> of your, uh, really? like nowadays, you, you see like on a weekend, you are seated at home uh, and you feel that you don't want to cook. You simply dial Order something in. and somebody will bring <laughs> you food. <laughs> yes, well, yes. Mm. there's that. And b just before we finish, what do you think, because we've talked about all the positives, what are some of the things that we need to look out for even as we embrace this technology so that we do not, it doesn't become um, dangerous or overtake us in, in, in some ways? You know, uh, uh, of, uh, the, the first instance is about a labor market mm -hmm. because you'll find that most uh, uh, we subject many graduates to the job market. Mm -hmm. But once we subject them to the job market, uh, the industry does not uh, give them a chance because maybe mm -hmm. they don't have specific uh, or required skills for that particular industry. So the best thing uh, that we cannot talk about uh, disadvantages as such, mm -hmm. but we, the main uh, disadvantage is you being left out. You don't conform 
uh, to the industry mm -hmm. uh, requirements or industry um, or what they need uh, they want you cannot conform so it is about reskilling ourselves so that uh, as much as i have my degree as much mm -hmm. as i have my diploma you know as much as i have uh, my certificate what else uh, or some uh, w what uh, sort of skills do i have additional skills mm -hmm. which again can make me stand out uh, from the rest and uh, this will be only uh, we were talking about creating a platform and i'm thinking of having a platform whereby we can have training institutions and the industry so the industry can give us their needs then we train as per their needs mm -hmm. so that when these guys they come out they, they find already a job mm -hmm. in place waiting for them okay. you see so you are being trained on something which is happening you know so not that you, you are being trained when you go outside there you find whatever you They're did is what is totally irrelevant within the market so we need to restructure and find uh, uh, collect data from the industries uh, manufacturing blue chip companies everywhere you know so that we can transform and compare with the uh, and even to realign uh, the education system to conform to the needs of the industries mm -hmm. yes okay awesome uh, last one before before i forget it climate change you know we it's one of the key agendas of the world yes <laughs> really. yes mm. and uh, technology plays a big part into the climate change mm. so how do we also how, how do you think it's affecting climate change or how do we make sure as much as we're embracing technology it doesn't affect our planet so uh, a good question because uh, the climate issue is talk of the day mm -hmm. and uh, talk of the global and technology is not coming here had to make it worse mm -hmm. but how now do we engage technology do we bring how do we bring the aspects of technology mm -hmm. to address uh, the adverse effects of uh, climate change and you know for example we are talking about green energy you know mm -hmm. uh, we are talking about uh, smart farming you know uh, we are talking about um, electric cars you know we are doing away with the fossil fuels so you know Technology has started playing a greater role when it comes to uh, addressing the adverse effects of climate change. Mm -hmm. So there is no way technology will be able, it is only that we, if we misuse the technology. Now that we bring the aspect of e-waste management system, now whatever uh, e electronic e-waste, how do we handle them? How do we dispose the e-waste? Because if we don't have a proper policy or mechanism on how we are going to address the e-waste management system, again, uh, technology is going to destroy uh, the, uh, the environment. Okay. So we must look at how now do we address the issues of mm -hmm. e-waste management system. And again, how do we, uh, will technology uh, play, how can we have e-foresting, you know, bringing technology, uh, environmental technology factors uh, to ensure that we conserve and protect the environment, you know. So with the, and this will only happen through various innovation, mm -hmm. you know. Okay. Very well said. <laughs> <laughs> well put, all mm -hmm. right. So mm -hmm. that's why we, we come to a close on this, unless you have something else you want to add as you give us your social media handles. So... Uh, the only thing uh, that I would like to add, mm -hmm. uh, we are in the fourth industrial revolution. And uh, as we speak, uh, it is the driver of the economy and driver of the mm -hmm. entire globe. So uh, whenever we are doing, uh, let us not cry that there are no jobs. Jobs, opportunities are there. It is only that we are not uh, well prepared uh, to... Um, to pick on these opportunities so we need to think on how we can be able to rescale ourselves like uh, we recently the uh, case series also are released mm -hmm. and uh, we have uh, those who are going to university uh, those who are going to uh, technical uh, training uh, colleges you know and uh, now what we need to think now as much as you are going uh, you are going to join the uh, the institution of higher learning 
do you have uh, the concept, do you have an idea of the current situation or the future? Can you map yourself in the next 20, 50 years to come where the world would be where when we roll out uh, the aspect of technology? So you start to think what can you be able to do and conform uh, to the requirements of the, uh, the dynamics of the, of the technology. So I would like uh, the young people uh, to be uh, very innovative and uh, to think on how they can reskill themselves so that they can be able to remain um, in the job market okay. and uh, create opportunities for them. Mm -hmm. Because uh, the industries, they will always look how innovative you are. You know, I, I can be a doctor and I, I'm a computer scientist at mm -hmm. the same time, mm -hmm. you know. So when I'm employed as a doctor, I can as well do uh, other uh, computer science, uh, you know, so they will not need to hire a doctor and hire a computer scientist. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm a, an accountant and I, 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 I did again have, I've done human resource, you know, so I can be able to manage both. Because if you don't do that, that's why we are talking about the artificial intelligence, where it is going to replace human. Mm -hmm. So before it replaces us, we must tr to conform to the dynamics to be the controllers of the current situation, mm -hmm. not the situation to control us. Okay, yes. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Let us control the system, <laughs> not the system control us. So can people find you on social media? So, LinkedIn, I'm John Copio. Uh, Twitter, mm -hmm. John Copio. Facebook, John Copio. And uh, I do mentorship programs, mm -hmm. especially on tech okay. uh, and innovation, because uh, that is my passion. And uh, because that's the way the world is going to, I want to ensure that the young people, I give them that mentorship so that they can conform to the dynamics of the current situation, mm -hmm. which is driven by technology. All right. So all yes. the information on the mentorship, they can find it on your page, right? Yes, yes. They will find everything there. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. So that has been engineer John Opio. He is a computer forensics expert. He's been talking to us about uh, the Africa's ICT development indicators and the fourth industrial revolution. I hope you've taken something from it. One or two things. The uh, main thing I've taken, let, the, let us control the system, let not the system control us. So let us reskill to adapt to the changing world. You know, we are all going technology. So we take a short break on this and then we'll be back with some entertainment interviews. Stick with us. Thank you. Hawata, hawata, hawata weza. 